Greetings and hallucinations to all you folks out there, and you probably think you're hallucinating because there's actually an FAF cast up. What? This hasn't happened since the end of last week, and that was a short little live cast, but hey, I am back into my regular schedule. We are getting things done over here, and I am back for another game. Now, the sad news is I am actually going to be gone again this Saturday, so no live cast, but I am going to record another game for you guys and leave it up to post, so you will not be short a cast this week. So today we've got a wonder game. The last time I tried to cast a wonder, it was utterly disastrous. Tried three times through, had a different technical issue each of the three times, and eventually just gave up. And Guile casted that one. It was an awesome wonder game. If you want to see it, go over there and check out his channel. But I have a four versus four wonder game. This one is a little bit stacked, but I have been told it is incredibly interesting. So we're going to go ahead and dive into it. Typically, Wonders are very, very action-packed, so hopefully this will be a good game. On the northern side, we have Man of Action taking Turquoise Seraphim right there in the back slot. He has uh, got the double resource allocation, which is typical of an air slot choice. And he will be versus an Aeon for Speed 2 in the Maroon. On the side slots, we have Cool Gamer as UEF versing or going versus moody as uef as well i don't know if versing is actually usable as a verb in that context it doesn't seem like it should be maybe it should just be in the dictionary of brink i don't know so getting banned taking the center slot versus west mania that is cybern versus seraphim matchup and then on the lower side we have morax taking brilliant orange seraphim actually more like burnt orange seraphim it is not searing my eyeballs so it's not brilliant versus the infamous taquito with the customary cybern faction we can expect a fire beetle at some point in the game because I don't think I have ever seen Taquito play a game without pulling out a fire beetle at some point. So we'll just have to keep an eye out for that. All right, we've got a spirit heading around the back. That is going to give some good intel in the rear, and I would bet good money that this mole is going to get cloaked and is going to park somewhere in the corner back here just to keep an eye on things in the air slot. That can be incredibly useful. Ah, Aggression on the lower side and the center. We have a Mantis here picking off an Engineer. Trying to dodge and weave, but it is going to go down. And that Mantis is going to get away. Nope, there's the tank. I think he will be able to run, though. And there's a Mantis on this side that is being pursued quite hotly by a tank. He is going to make it to the back, though, and probably skirt around the outside edge looking for stray Engineers. As I was saying, this mole, if you cloak it, park it in the back, you can tag things and they will stay tagged on radar. You can keep an eye on upgrades to get the exact timing of the T2 and T3 factory upgrade. And you can even see if someone is trying to hide a devious ploy in the back of their base. They think that they're so safe because they're well out of reach of T2 radar, but hey, there's a mole in the back and you can see bombers or whatever else massing up in the rear. It just gives you a really good heads up system. So that mole can literally be a lifesaver. If you're ever a cyber on the outside edge, be a good team player, send one of those guys up there if you can get it there and it will help you out. So we've got bombers passing each other in the air, heading towards the other players. We do have an interceptor that is going to pick that bomber off before it can do a dang thing. And then we've got the bomber from Morax actually clearing. It is going to drop and hit all four power generators, kill the engineer, and do a small amount of damage to that air factory. You got an air turret going down. That is going to deny that bomber after a second pass. And we have a bomber coming out for Taquito heading northward. It does have some damage on it, and there's an interceptor in pursuit. Seraphim Bomber is not quite going to kill those power generators, leaving them with 100 health each. But that is going to slow down power production. Another engineer going down in that strike. So that bomber is going to go down. Again, I don't think there were any casualties in that. So, lots of early bombers. Not a whole lot going on, although this one right here is playing the hero. <laughs> Seven kills on that thing and it is still flying we're gonna go for eight mostly engineer kills so that is definitely worth the mass invested and while uh, moody is spending apm in his base trying to deal with the bomber threat we have tanks now getting around the outside edge from the cool gamer 
So we have the 800 player on the same team as the 2100. This is basically a handicap. I mean, no offense whatsoever to Moody, but you got to do something to balance it. Although in a game with people in here, as good as these guys are, I think that the handicap is slightly excessive because you have four competent players versus three and a slightly weaker link. I'm not going to say he's a bad player because I haven't seen him play yet, but typically the rank speaks of your ability level once you have enough games in. So this is going to be the guy to watch for an early elimination and then these guys having to pick up the slack. All right, got Bomber coming in for blanket damage. There is a large amount of mana moving in on the left side. We have a combined assault, but we do have good teamwork. Westmania is pulling his units and ACU over closer to the side. Taquito is going to back up from the assault from Morax. We're going to have more tanks moving in. Morax pulling his ACU back because he sees what kind of threat there is coming. And we're going to see a connection of forces here, but yeah, that's all going to get pushed back. No harm done. And I think the mass field is actually going to fall into the hands of the southern team. So that is a good thing. White Bomber headed down. He is going to take a corner and go back. Decided not to pull off an assault. T1 Bombers are incredibly useful for their blanket damage. Um, I know their individual damage is not that high, usually around 300 damage, 250, somewhere in that range. I think 150 with the Aeon, because it does have the stun. But if you figure 250, ooh, I spy attack missile. Hey, hey, we're about to see some eco go away. Poor eco, always getting trashed. More T1 tanks entering the base. This is not good at all for Moody. Someone's going to have to come to his assistance. Looks like we're going for a direct hit to the T2 factory. What better way to deny your opponent's ability to defend themselves? Because that engineer is what he needs to build the TAC defense to stop the TAC missiles that are... Oh, no! That are incoming. If he would have aimed at the T2 factory for a second hit... He would have actually taken out the T2 factory and then they couldn't have built TMD on this side. Would have been free and ready to destroy the entire economy. This has been scouted. It's going to have to fly over three anti-air turrets and pass two interceptors. So I don't see it succeeding, but nice try, Westmania. That is always a nice thing to see. Valiant effort to get units around the outside edge. T1 bombers, even though they only do 250 damage each, the area of effect is very, very large. So if you have blanket damage coming in to four or five units, that's a thousand damage in one pass, which is well worth the mass of losing that T1 bomber, especially if that pass allows you to win versus a superior force. That extra damage can be just what's needed to allow your forces to triumph and lose less units on your side, which puts you ahead for later on in the game. I... On one hand, I love seeing it because a variety of gameplay is always cool to see. And when you see dominance by new units, you see people coming up with new ways to exploit the system and new ways to use units. And I've been seeing constantly suiciding T1 bombers in all of my games. They throw them away haphazardly, not worrying about whether they live or not. And it is an absolute wrecker of worlds because if you have a lot of build power with bunches of T1 engineers packed in really close, those bombers are going to be killing a dozen engineers per pass, which can be a devastating loss in the mid game Navy scenario. And then even just, you know, you can be cool and calm and collected and hurling your units back and forth across the map. And then all of a sudden here comes five T1 bombers and takes 90% of your units to half health. And then what do you do? I mean, you can't repair them all. There's no land depots. Hey, that's a unit we could add to the game. We've got air depots. Why not land depots? We need repair stations out on the front line. Oh, wait, I forgot. That's the Seraphim ACU. Much under... It, it is a very underutilized ability and probably not worth the mass in the T1 phase. Probably in T2, definitely in T3. But there is a nano regen field upgrade for the Seraphim Commander, which does have a gun upgrade actually at the moment. Morax is in trouble because Westmania has a gun upgrade and he... Oh, he does as well. Okay. His ACU just wasn't firing for some reason. I don't know why. Cool Gamer, surrounded by units. 
He does have a strong commander, though. That is a T2 vetted commander, and he is firing for all he's worth. It looks like he does have the gun upgrade. Yes, he's obliterating artillery in single shots. He's got the tanks going down, and that is fine and dandy. ACU is going to survive that very easily. He's actually going to pull another vet off of it. So well done, cool gamer. Westmania looking like he's a little low on health versus Morax. He's down to 3k. Taquito's going to come in and try to interject. He's going to say, hey, hey you, leave my friend alone here. And I don't think he's going to be soon enough though. Ah, there we go. Morax pulling back. He sees the units in the back end. 4,600 health with another ACU on him. That means he cannot safely detonate Westmania without dying himself. And we've got a Cerberus turret in the back here. Second one going down. That is going to be pounding away on these units from far away. Too bad that little rock formation right there was blocking a lot of that DPS. That is actually a third Cerberus turret going down. Nicely done by Taquito. He does not have the gun upgrade. I don't think. Let us check here. Yeah, he doesn't have the gun upgrade. It's a completely unupgraded ACU, but the extra HP and the 100 DPS getting thrown into the mix versus these two um, ACUs was enough to push them back from his teammate. And the fact that he had T2 point defense to back him up meant that they could not push him towards his base. So that is pretty much the ideal scenario right there for denying an ACU on ACU kill. I don't know why, but there's a tank and a scout from the back player. Well, that's interesting. We got a flat coming around on the outside edge. That is probably going to be parked somewhere out here randomly. There it is. And that will actually prevent drops coming around the outside edge. Any drop that flies over it, the units on the underside of the transport are just going to get obliterated. So, actually, that's a very, very nice tactic. I have not seen that before. But it's pretty dang cool. I've seen lots of innovative things come from Taquito. I do like watching him play because he does interesting things. Maybe not successful 100% of the time, but he is an unusual player. So we've got full and total air control in the hands of Speed 2, and that is a dangerous thing. You've got better eco on the Southern Air, although Northern Air does have double RAS, so he will be going T3 Air very, very soon, actually right now. And his power output is higher, but we do have single RAS, and we're pushing T3 upgrade down here as well. Your highest ranked player has the biggest eco and total air control. That is pretty much a doomsday scenario if I have ever seen one. White has recovered nicely from his base intrusion, as has Moody. Both of these guys got their bases ransacked and bailed out by their teammates. And now they're back to duking it out in the middle as if nothing ever happened, although both of them are kind of low on the scoreboard here. 29 mass income for Moody and 41 for the Cool Gamer, which is slightly below average. Nice recovery there. And let's see. So getting banned and more actions kind of hanging out on the left hand side we do have a lot of t1 spam still coming in from west mania but we're starting to see a little bit of t2 mix always want to see those ilshavas when you're seraphim you need to have them out as early as possible and keep them on the field as long as possible because undoubtedly ilshavas are the strongest t2 unit they're basically t2.5 and considering how weak seraphim's t3 is you gotta field them and you gotta field them hard Nice little radar snipe there from Taquito. That is going to blind his opponents, at least temporarily, because I don't see another radar station. However, there is a mole. So we're not totally without intel. We got triads going down on the north side. Those are going to be pounding away on Moody's base, and I don't think Moody has radar because his point defense is not firing, even though there's T1 engineers, like, right outside vision radius. So... Two triads are going to beat two triads with basically not a shot fired in retaliation. And that's a nice little fire base that Cool Gamer has. Probably a couple more point defense than most people would like. Ah, see, there's the scout. And now the point defense is firing. But it is too little, too late. Two versus one, that one's going to win. All right. Reclaim going on in the middle. Morax doing a very good job of sweeping up mass. That is essential to this game, as I probably don't even need to say because everyone should know it. 
Listen, a couple of swift wins to that flak, but not too much. Still got a fairly good group on the field. We have our first two ASF out for Man of Action. He has beaten Speed to T3 Air by an incredibly narrow margin, but Speed is catching up. He's already producing air. He's got a third upgrade going down as commander. He is now caught up in power production, basically. He's a thousand short, but Seraphim does have more power on their resource allocation than Aeon does. T1 Bombers swinging around the outside edge. Like I was saying, abuse the ever-living hell out of T1 Bombers because they are the single strongest unit in terms, or air unit, in terms of damage for the mass cost. But we do have Swift Winds and ASF, so those bombers, instead of being used well on a group of engineers and power like that, they are going to get killed off by ASF. Retargeted, gonna get a couple of kills out of it, but not too terribly many. And they are all down. T3 Scout winging around the outside edge. Now we are officially in the... Well, no, we're not in the late game yet. I was about to say, we're officially in the T3 stage, pushing on towards where we start deciding how to end our opponents. But it's not there yet. There's still a lot of T1 on the field, and we haven't seen a strap bomber yet. So we are not... We have not arrived. Viper Spam. The most essential and possibly broken tool in the Siren's arsenal. Got a T1 bomber coming in to lay down a little bit of damage there. That is honestly the best counter to Vipers. Are some strategically kamikaze bombers. Ooh, Moody's in trouble. We have a shielded commander. That is shielded T2 gun ACU, which is about the most brutal combination available to any ACU. And a lot of striker or pillars. And those are bearing down on Moody. I think we're going to see Moody die here. There is no way that I see him surviving this. He is retreating as quickly as he possibly can, but he's shedding health even faster. Cool gamer retreating. Deciding it's not even worth sticking around for the ACU explosion because you know what? That's just extra damage that I don't need However, Moody with the help of a vet and a couple of overcharges may Actually survive this. He's down to 1,000 health Still going down. He's got five strikers on his tail 300. No! He was so close to surviving Ah, so sad. Oh well. <laughs> there goes the 800 player. A valiant effort to be sure. And kudos to his teammates for trying to save him. But that is the inevitable end of an 800 player in a 1300 plus game. We can feel sad, but we should not be surprised. Hopefully he learned something from that. As long as you learn something from a game, it is a good game. Speed is doing his normal thing. He is ecoing as hard as he possibly can and not let his teammates die. That eco is usually how he pulls games back from the brink of insane. Okay, I'm not even going to make that joke. He does a fantastic job of surviving by the skin of his teeth right until the end and then dishing out a game ender so quickly that his opponents cannot do anything to stop it. I did a wonder cast way back when that featured him systematically quartering off and slaughtering the entire enemy team by himself with harbinger drops and it was one of the most hilarious and depressing things that i've ever watched because the opposing team went through absolute hell to kill off everything that his teammates had and he got back to where he was cordoned off in just his base I was very nearly an ACU death there. Able to force back those Ilshivas with some overcharges and the help of a teammate. Um, and then Speed just killed them all anyway. And it was it was so sad. And it looks like he's setting up to try that again. But so getting banned has pulled out T3. He's got a brick on the field fronting for some hoplites. Which is really a pretty cool idea actually. There's a lot of damage packed into these hoplites, but they're very, very fragile. So that's going to allow them to skirt behind the brick. The brick can wipe out any advancing units, and then you're basically packing in quadruple the DPS of that brick in a tiny group of hoplites 
in the back. So anytime you get a bunched up group of units that tries to swarm your brick, bam, they're all dead. West Mania, though. No. No. Hoplites have a longer arc to their fire. So, or a taller arc. So he's going to take some hits. Not many, but a few. But his overcharges were blocked. He probably could have killed five of those hoplites in a single overcharge if he had been able to hit them. We've got a group of pillars. Yes, pillars. Almost said another unit name. Got a group of pillars coming around the backside edge that is going to endanger the rear of Speed's base. But look at that. He's got more than enough build power on hand. He's got two obsidian. Uh, oblivion turrets my goodness the misspeaks he's got two oblivion turrets online plenty of t1 point defense and even a shield to guard that t3 mechs at all costs because he does not want to lose it then you can see he had walls queued up briefly speed is a huge fan of walls i've seen him use them many many times before this is actually not looking good for the southern team at all assisting the shield that's interesting okay We've got basically two Ecos gone. I would say two-fifths of the total mass income of the Southern team has been eliminated, but you can see speed is 30 mass per tick up over Man of Action, and I believe that will be growing. He's throwing up Omni in the rear of his base to keep an eye on things. He's doing a nice little build here to get the adjacency bonuses for all of his air which Man of Action is not doing. So his power levels are going to be much more efficiently managed. And he is setting up for a long-term game. This is very nice teamwork from the cool gamer and so getting banned. I wonder if he did get banned. Probably not. Um, these guys work together to deny this expansion to the southern team. If you kill a player, you also need to deny the reclaim and deny the mass points to the other team to get the full effectiveness of eliminating a player. Uh, if you don't do that, there is a good chance that whoever lands this extra base will actually recover to be better than that player was because of the instant injection of mass from all of the reclaim and then gathering all those mass points into one focused APM set instead of working separately. So you need to do this. By the same token, if you have a teammate die, the first thing you should do is start spamming T1 engineers and grab the closest swarm of engineers and immediately send them over there to reclaim. Even if they all die, if each engineer reclaims one T1 tank, it has paid for itself. Anything over that is just gravy. So if you send 15 T1 engineers over there and you reclaim two or three T2 tanks and one T2 mass extractor, you've paid for all the engineers and you already have a mass bonus. So don't worry about losing your engineers. Just go reclaim. Reclaim as quickly as you can. Man of Action has got a pretty good force of ASF online. Let's see what he's got here. He is pulling 46 into his squadrons and we've got that's not right seven swift winds and 42 for speed so the number is very close slight ever so slight advantage to man of action but we have the mass income gap so speed is actually building restores at the moment so he is actually ahead on air production because of those restores speed is outstripping him in eco which means that once he finishes upgrading his eco his production will very very quickly overtake man of actions man of action is setting up a power grid now he is getting that adjacency bonus from the air factories which is critical to air builds because it greatly reduces the amount of power generators you have to build which in turn saves you mass that you can build to you can use to build nice big shiny things like experimentals and nukes and all kinds of cool stuff i <laughs> There are always nukes on this map. I've never figured out why this map almost always comes down to nukes. But it's so small. It's like, why Why do you need an infinite range game ender on a 10 kilometer map? But apparently they do do their job well. And a lot of times people don't actually scout them. So, yeah, it, it's a strange situation. So it looks like Speed is going to claim air control, beautifully kiting his 
restores just in range of those ASF. No damage was taken by the restorers. Well, there's a couple in there with a few damage, but not much. And he's using his ASF to engage his opponent's ASF. That extra range on the restorer is what makes it such a dangerous anti-air tool. You pair them with ASF, and it's brutal. You can't send only restorers because mass for mass restorers lose to ASF. But good micro with ASF mixed with restores a lot of times will greatly, greatly trump just ASFs. Maybe even in the hands of two equally skilled people because there's so much health on the restores too that it takes a lot of firing cycles to kill them. And then focusing on the restores lets the ASF get behind you and it's just a bad situation. So now we have the floating... I, I don't know what to call that. I was about to say the Cloud of Doom or something like that, but he's got a good group of ASF. The problem is, these guys have now built Mobile Flak. So the Mobile Flak is a good denier of gunships of any sort. If those gunships venture in too close, they are going to die to all of that flak. It looks like he is kind of skirting around the outside edge. Gonna tink a little damage down on that mechs, but get away, get away, get away. Do not get in range of the flak. Nice micro there by speed. And he is going to keep those for his very own. So that's a flip right there. Looks like West Mania is going to gain control of his teammate's mass points. The teammate is dead, but he will always be remembered by the memorials. We will build upon his mass slots. Okay, maybe remembered is a strong term, but hey, we all like his mass. And sniper bots. Morax, <laughs> I guess Morax has to pick up for total tuna since tuna isn't in this game. He's got to build a few sniper boats just to maintain traditions. Those sniper bots are going to lay down some extended range damage on the bricks. Basically, that's the only tool that Seraphim has to deal with Percivals and bricks because the Othams are so terribly slow and have such short range you pretty much got to field the sniper bots and kite them out of the way in order to deal with the bricks. And now we have trebuchets, which is going to endanger the sniper bots. And so the game of rock, paper, scissors continues until time stops and RTS games are no longer a thing. Actually, that is the one thing that I do like about Supreme Commander most, I think. There is very little rock, paper, scissors unless you're strictly talking about range because pretty much any unit can be abused to do a variety of things and no one unit is an exact counter to any other one unit or class of units. Possibly with the exception of the UEF Rambocom and the Percival just because they're so brutally strong. I shouldn't put the Percival in the same category because the Percival is actually a unit that has a purpose that is balanced into a faction it is very 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 strong but it's not like brokenly op and the uef rambo com is i really hope that that is one of the first issues that zock fixes by the way i know i mentioned in the last cock last cast holy cow i need to get my tongue under control um <laughs> Zok is the new balance counselor. So he is now in charge of balance patches and fixing things. If you have any suggestions, you need to talk to him. And there is a good air engagement right there. We've got Speed's ASF keeping man of action in range of that cloud of restores to let those restores just wail on those things. And yeah, Speed started out with way less ASF. He basically lost, well, he did lose a few, but not too many. And Man of Action lost about half his total number. So yeah, Speed is actually squeaking by on less production. Well, no, he is building a lot of restorers, so that is quite a bit of, produ of production. He is focusing on defensive actions in order to scale up the rest of what he's doing while Man of Action is trying to get something to project with and we have the ultimate projection, a chicken. The Athatha is going to hit the field right now. Man of Action finishing that thing up and it is going to be sent to the front lines. As always, Wonder has officially devolved into a T4 war. 
It is inevitable in pretty much every wonder game. There's a monkey lord I was checking around for answering T4s and we've got it. Takedo is going to send that directly for Morax. All he has is sniper bots. That is a T2 ACU with a couple of shields over him, but he's standing in power generators. There is intel because we do have trebuchets hitting that monkey lord. That monkey lord is going to head on in there and try for an ACU kill, I think. It's pretty much the only purpose of a monkey lord. ACU snipes. That's all it's good for. Not really. I am totally kidding. It is actually a fairly strong unit in most regards. But right now, it's being used basically as a slow-moving TML. I think the chicken is going to get there, though. There is not going to be a vet available for that monkey. The <laughs> chicken's just going to tear into it. Quarter of the health gone before it can do anything. Now it's down in the red. There's the connection of the large shot. And it is toasty fried. Can you say mass donation? I'm sure Takedo is kicking himself right now because he's left this nice juicy piece of mass right on Morax's doorstep. And that is basically the last thing that you ever want to do when you're versus a competent player. And I'm going to bump up the speed on this one just a little bit so that we can get through this game. Alrighty then, we've got Sam's going down all over the place trying to create some air denial because the air is very strong with both of these teams and there we go, a little bit of graphics hitching. Ah, we're back to normal. I will just stay at zero speed because it's much prettier. Okay, if I turn down Bloom or turned off bloom rather. I think I could actually pull this, but we're just gonna leave it like it is for now. I may do that in the next cast though. Um, yeah, enough discussion about that stuff. I have a, um, a 3570K CPU and a 760 extremely overclocked graphics card with four gigs of RAM, and I believe my CPU is bottlenecking. But it's not for lack of speed on the CPU. It is basically, I think my motherboard can't handle it. it it's pushing up on time for an upgrade just because of the things that I'm asking it to do, but I don't really have the money for that right now, so we're just gonna sit on this 3570K for another year. <laughs> I actually have it planned to replace it. Decephalus! We have the attack of the venereal crabs. <laughs> that is such a great walking pun. There is an infinite range of jokes that we can make about a megalith named Syphilis. <laughs> it is going to backstep versus that chicken. Chicken's gonna go down. It is going to take some lightning to the face, but that's okay because it's a megalith with huge amounts of health. That thing is going to withdraw, and now we have an even better mass donation for the southern team than they gave to the north. The only disadvantage they have is that it is not yet implemented, although, yeah, Morax is being really slow to jump on that. I would have thought he would be quicker to use the mass. There he goes. He's got another Yathatha going. That has a bit of assistance on it, and it looks like he is throwing down an upgrade on his ACU, and he will probably assist with that as well. That was resource allocation. That's probably why he wasn't reclaiming more heavily. He was low on power, and we can all understand that. We have a projection of anti-air. We've got Flak moving in with some bricks. West Mania should deal with that with no trouble whatsoever. An interesting point of fact, if the Flak goes under a friendly shield and then is trying to fire at air, or if Flak from the northern team goes under a shield of the southern team, the shield will actually block the Flak shots because it doesn't matter if an enemy unit is inside the shield shooting out or outside the shield shooting in, the shield still blocks it. So basically the worst thing you can do is take your flak and stick it under an enemy shield because then the shield is protecting the air units. Ha ha ha! So yeah, you can also use that to your advantage. Uh, if you push mobile shields 
into enemy flak formations, you can actually block a large amount of DPS and give your own gunships or bombers more time to kill the flak without taking damage themselves. I, yeah. So anyway, use that. Use that to your advantage. It is a cool manipulation. Like I said, Subcom is not a game of rock, paper, scissors. It is a game of creative thinking, and that is the only reason that I have played this game for as long as I have. I am by no means a pro player, but I love, I absolutely love coming up with creative solutions to new problems, and there is never an end-all game-winning strategy because you always come across somebody who's either better at implementing than you or is better at unit manipulation than you are. So, yeah, th th there's infinite entertainment in this game. This crab is now moving up. The syphilis is going to try to infect this chicken, but I don't know if it is going to be successful. There are a lot of bricks coming down. There are, I hear strat bombers. There's the strat bombers. All right, yeah. Crab is going to lose, so he is going to backtrack all the way back to his base. We have a good number of sniper bots, a full health chicken, and a huge group of bricks. That is not a good combination for a two-thirds health crab. That's pretty much not going to work out well for you at all. We've got restores moving in along with their cloud of ASF when there's no supporting ground-based anti-air. This many, uh, this many restores is pretty much the end of any cloud of ASF, and right now, well, there's a lot of scouts. It's pretty much soaking all of the damage. I was about to say this Air Force is just sitting there taking DPS, but, eh, scouts took the brunt of it. Okay, we have a shield commander, SACU, my bad, RamboCom moving in. West Mania needs to lay down some overcharges on that thing, otherwise he is going to be dead meat. He's got a mobile shield with him, those awesome Seraphim mobile shields that have 10k health apiece, but 10k health is not much, versus a Percival, three Percivals, and a Rambocom. Overcharge for your life, my friend, because you are going to need it. All right. Restores coming in, Flak is down, so many Restores that the Flak doesn't even do any good. And there goes the Rambo Com and the Percivals. Restores kiting in to try to lay down as much damage as they possibly can. Here comes the Strats, not enough to kill Westmania, I don't think. Didn't even get any bombs off. Tech 2 Shield Generator is going to be the first thing to go down, and that is a kill denial for the Southern team, Speed being an extremely good team player. All right, I love the idea of the bouncers. They need to be where they can defend against air, but when you park them within range of a group of, of I don't even know how to pronounce that. I was about to call the name out, but it is a Seraphim unit, so nobody can pronounce that. Soothanus. Sooth anus. Yes, that is what it is for sure. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's not going to work out. You're going to lose all of your anti-air. So here come the crabs. Snipe God's Servant. So is it a crab named Snipe who is God's Servant, or is he saying that he's going to snipe God's Servant? I don't know which it is. It doesn't matter, though, because we have two megaliths versus one chicken. Doesn't matter what kind of support you've got for that. The megaliths are going to win. Plus, we have a commander, a... And this is the Rambo preset, which means it has the EMP stun. And that, walking into your group of T3 units, is nothing to joke about. Because that sucker is going to stun T3 units like there's no tomorrow. And that can be brutal against your armies. That chicken's going to go down. We've got lots of T3 units standing nearby. Strat bombers coming in. Is that going to be the end of the Megalith? Yes! When the next round of snipers fires. They may be out of range already. Ah, that one is vetted, so unless the strats come around again, that one is actually going to heal up and possibly live to fight another day. He is coming down. Nope, there go the strats. You're going to pretty much ignore that full health megalith, but you got to kill the one just to deny that mass, or deny that incursion into the base, rather. I had mass on the brain because I was thinking about the ability of reclaim that the megalith has. 
sniper bots and megalith firing on it it is losing health fast there we go reclaiming that entire megalith wreck in just a few seconds if you build a unit on top of a wreck with a megalith since it does have an engineering suite and oh beautiful dodge from west mania well done nice all right, ASF coming in in pursuit. That is going to be the loss of the entire Air Force that Speed has. He has no more ASF, so no interception capabilities. Well, okay, now he has no more ASF. <laughs> I spoke a little too soon there, but that is a true word now. Um, so those strat bombers are pretty much going to have free reign of anywhere on the map. The restorers are not. But Speed still has enough restores that he can trump Man of Action's ASF. So basically we have an offensive force and a reactionary force. And the reactionary force is significantly slower than the offensive force. Which is bad news for your team. Megaliths are going to be advancing. As I was saying, if you build an egg with the crab on top of a wreck, you can reclaim with the Megalith at incredibly fast speeds. Like... 1400 mass per tick or something like that so you're going to overflow your storage unless you just have ludicrous amounts of storage here comes another stack bringer i love this naming mod i don't know if he is is he actually naming them or does he have a naming mod i think he's actually naming them there goes the megalith those are stores coming in to take a chunk out of that flesh and they're going to hang around even longer because there's not too terribly much anti-air Going to chase away those ASF after decimating about half the four strap bombers winging around to the right. Lots of shielding up around West Mania's ACU and he's already setting up for a dodge there. Restores moving back to the right. Looks like strap bombers are thinking about it. They're thinking about it and they're going to go for the Megalith. This Megalith is reclaiming the other megalith while laying damage down on the bricks holy cow so many projectiles yes i definitely need to turn bloom off next game um relaxing okay so that is a naming mod because it's renaming with the health status of the unit and it's dead kudos to you taquito that is a cool naming mod i like it and this one's named Fred. Just Fred. <laughs> Have all those epic names in a row. And then the simplicity of it is, is just as awesome. All right, scouts coming out. Strat bombers producing a few ASF. We got something different for every factory to make. And that is a heavy artillery installation. Why are you building... Heavy, oh, because there's a halfway completed heavy artillery installation on the south side. Because speed has gotten ludicrous amounts of mass from all of the megaliths being reclaimed and doing the reclaiming. So both of these guys are probably swimming in overflow from their teammates here, who are basically trading megaliths and chickens back and forth and reclaiming the mass and overflowing. So yeah, why not build a tech three artillery installation? You've got the mass. Why not do it? 439 income for speed, which is a huge amount of mass, no matter how much reclaim you're getting, and the strap bombers are on the move again. Where are they off to? You've already tried to kill West Mania like five times, and you've failed every single time. Why are you trying again? You've seen that he can dodge. You have seen this. There's two Rambo comps. Oh, 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 that hurt to watch. Mmm. Rambocom dying over here while it's trying to reclaim a megalith. Of course, because that's basically all this game is, is reclaiming megaliths. Both as a noun and a verb. Um, <laughs> and we've got Rambo... Oh, I think this is the death of Westmania. This is the end. What? No, he has survived. He's on 2,000 health. Rambo comps coming in, laying down damage, dodging the shots, and boom! He's out of here. Strap Bombers answering from speed, hurling a dozen or better at his opponent, but there's enough T3 mobile anti-air and shielding in the area that it's basically no good whatsoever. 
Restore is getting slaughtered by that T3 mobile anti-air. ASF moving in. Chicken is going to go down. There's just so many Restores. I do realize that Restores die to anti-air fairly easily, but when you have this many, it's harder to kill them all. And yeah, they're going to back off. But both Air Forces for these guys have been heavily, heavily reduced. And that incursion has been stopped. And now we have more reclaim. Yay! We can reclaim with the Megalus some more and maybe finish these T3 artilleries. Oh, yeah, that was done already, though. Okay, Rambo come in the base. This is a problem. We have the ACU over here. It's not available to overcharge. We have a nuke that's three quarters loaded. Lots of stuff going on in the southern corner here. I'll check on the north in a second. And we've got restores moving in. That is going to be what will save the day. Rapidly chewing through the shield on that Rambo comm. Unfortunately, it is not a heavy shielded comm, but it's in the engineers now. I'm gonna wreck that T3 power generator to store destroy all of the engineers around it as well as heavily damaging anything nearby but it's not quite going to make it 1600 why is it still going down is he reclaiming it yes he's reclaiming it all right t3 artillery must be done on the other side there it is it's firing and we have nuke defense which is loaded with three shots so nuke is going to be no good whatsoever and we've got seraphim shielding down on top of this pro tip Assisted Seraphim shields can completely and totally 100% stop an Aeon T3 artillery. All you have to do is build a T3 shield and put like 300 build power on it. And as long as you can take the hit to your mass supply and make sure that all of your defense is loaded, basically the Aeon T3 artillery can never break it. <clears throat> it's kind of a broken mechanic to be completely honest. I've seen someone survive against not one, but two Salvations firing at a Seraphim shield, and the shield replenished so quickly that the Salvations could not break it, which was just mind-blowing to me. Takedo is not looking very healthy. We got 5,000 health left on that Commander. Three Strap Bombers coming in. That's more than enough to kill it. It's UEF with a big area of effect, and boom! Another ACU is down, and we have Speed the Lone Ranger standing amidst the chaos. He has got a tremendous field of reclaim standing before him, but not the units to project and get it. He's got engineers all over the place, though, and they are reclaiming as fast as they can go so that he can build something to solve this horrendous game loss problem that he's experiencing. We've got T3 shielding going down, but it is not building quick enough. Oh, that was a lucky impact. A little bit farther over, and the AOE would have actually killed that shield. Is it going to build before the next shot comes in? I don't think so. And there's the hit. He's actually going after the air HQ. He's trying to eliminate the air production of speed, because if he can eliminate the air production, then strap bombers can come in and kill this commander. I think this activated almond. What? What is this madness? Dire experimental. That is an appropriate name. I love how all of these have the clan tag. It's like, yeah. Okay, enough comments about that. Um, so, yeah. Speed is not looking very healthy, and I don't see how he can survive against this. He's down to his last handful of restores. He's got basically no ASF. He's got strap bombers coming in, pounding away at his eco. He's got two megaliths and a chicken coming in, along with the T3 artillery that's firing at him. He's producing this GC as quickly as he can, Strategic but one GC detected. is not going to do any good, and there's a nuke. Where is the nuke planted? The nuke is planted directly on his head? Nope. That was another ping. All right, Nuke is headed out. Where is it off to? If he kills Pink with this, I'm going to die a little inside. Okay, he's headed for Orange. Morax is the target. There's the anti-Nuke. It is down, and there goes the ACU. Megalus shredding speeds commander. All right. That was a long long decline into failure very epic game i love the megalith exchange over here that was kind of hysterical i'm glad that happened it was great to watch um but speed did fall and like i said at the beginning of the game oh listen to that there's a smoke alarm going off 
I think we can all relate to this. <laughs> um, so, yeah. That is all I've got on this game. Um, if you have an 800 on a team, even if you have a 2100 when you're paired versus a lot of competent players, uh, at least two of whom I know for a fact, actually three, were on um, Mumble talking together, then it's not really going to work out well for you because you got to do too much to cover for the weak link to actually make it work. But excellent gameplay from all sides, lots of different units being used, lots of different strategies being used, and I hope that you guys enjoyed that game. All right, I'll be back around with another game on Saturday. You can expect that to be uploaded and probably a couple little videos here and there in between just to fill the gap. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next cast.